Well, good morning, everyone. Uh, I want to say a quick thank you and, and welcome to any of you who are brand new here. I know we got some students who come in regularly who it's their first time. So if it is your first time here in high school ministry, I want to say welcome and thank you for coming. Uh, my name is Connor, and I'm the high school pastor here, and I get the joy of hanging out with you guys on a weekly basis. Uh, as you know, if you have been with us, we finished up Mark before the break. Hopefully you guys all had a good break. Was it good? Did you have a good restful time? Yeah? Sledding. I went snowboarding for the first, well, not the first time, but it was the first time as like I'm older, and I got destroyed. Like my body hurts. Uh, it was a really bad experience, but it was super fun. It was a fun, bad experience. Uh, so hopefully you guys got good rest over the break. Um, let's jump into God's Word, because that's what we do here on Sunday mornings, is we like to hear from God's Word. So if you guys would open up to Romans chapter 12 with me, that's where we're going to be at this afternoon. Uh, now, with New Year's uh, comes great change, right? Everybody talks about these New Year's resolutions. How many of you guys are all about the resolution? Like, I'm going to get jacked this year, or like, I'm going to, you know, get first in Fortnite this year. I don't know what you guys do. Uh, how many of you guys have like New Year's resolutions though? Wow, that's like not a thing. Okay, a couple of you guys. Yeah, a lot of people like to do New Year's resolutions and what they're about is change, right? That's why people do New Year's resolutions because they want to create this great change in their life that's gonna drastically affect everything they do. And today and for the next two weeks, so today and next week, uh, we are talking about change, and actually a very specific area of change that I'm convicted that is going to land home for a lot of you. I've titled these next two weeks, The Voice Among Many Voices, and over the next two weeks, today, we're going to talk about the problem, and next week, we're going to talk about the solution. So the voice among many voices, and the problem, again, is today's matter at hand, so that's what we're going to talk about. Did you know that on the average teenage student, so high school student, spends an average of four to six hours of screen time every single day? Four to six hours. Now that equates to about 90 days every single year spent on a screen. 90 days of 365 days. That means if you, if you land in the average of high school students, who spend time on a screen or some kind of media, you will spend, if you continue on that trend, in the average, spend 25% of your life on a screen. A quarter of your life will be spent on a screen. That's just the average. That's crazy. With this rapid growth of time spent on media, a wave of turning to things like YouTube, and social media, and Google, for all of these questions that we face has awoken. Like I know when you guys have questions, or even when I have a question, our tendency is to run to these things for our answers. We go to other people, we try to find, you know, the right Google website or whatever, instead of going to trustworthy sources, or maybe even the Bible. Even in the Christian community, how often do we, as followers of Jesus, run to all these other things to get answers to the questions that we face? And the truth about things like Google and social media and movies and news and TikTok, and, I mean, sorry, TikTok, uh, and all of these other things is that they have underlying messages for you. I don't know if you've ever thought about that, but they have underlying messages for you they try to communicate, this is what beauty looks like. This is what you should look like. This is how you should speak and interact in relationships. So you should too. This is what you need or need to experience in order to be happy. All of these things have these underlying messages that they're preaching to you on a regular basis. Think of ads, right? Ads that we all face on nonstop, it says, it said on uh, uh, Google that the average person will experience four to 10,000 ads every single day. Four to 10,000, that's crazy. 
And the thing about ads is that their purpose, the reason why they exist, is because they're trying to get you to think differently about an area of your life, like your fitness, and then make you feel you need to add something to your life or buy something to then, which ultimately, hopefully, will make you feel more happy or more joyful or better looking, whatever it is. That's what ads are purposed in. And we face these all the time. Guys, these messages that the world preaches to you every day, they're both trying to and are succeeding at changing you, changing who you are. And so the problem, the thing that we're addressing today is this. Guys, the world is trying to change you. The world's trying to shape who you are. So how is the world doing this? How is it affecting us? That's what I want to tackle today. And most importantly, what does God think about that? So with your guys' Bibles open, Romans chapter 12, verse 2. It's one verse. A lot of you have heard it before. This is what we're going to read. So let's read it together. This is the Apostle Paul who wrote this, but it's God's word. It says, do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewal of your mind, that by testing you may discern what is the will of God, what is good, acceptable, and perfect. Let's pray before we continue on. God, thank you for your word. God, I don't know what we would do without it. Um, It holds truth that comes from you, the author of truth. And so, Lord, I just pray that your truth for us today would change us, would help us grow to look more like you. So God, soften our hearts and help us to learn. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. Now there are clear commands in this passage, right? Hopefully you guys all caught those. There is a do and a do not. And whenever you see, here's a fun fact, whenever you're reading scripture and you see a clear command to do something or to not, you would be wise to listen and to obey as followers of Jesus because God gives us commands that we might be blessed and that he might be honored through us. So it's really important that we listen to these. God's word here says, do not be conformed to this world. And so the first lesson that we learn from scripture in this text is that we as followers of Jesus It's my first charge to you guys today. Need to stop letting the world shape us. Need to stop letting the world shape you. The word Paul uses here is conformed. How many guys know what conformed means? Conformed, it's a specific word he used here. To be conformed to something is to become like something in speech, in character traits, in beliefs, in thoughts, in lifestyle, in purpose, all these things, it means to become like something. I remember, like I, I have fond memories of being at my grandma's house, because I love my grandma, shout out to you Grams, and I would be sitting at the table, like as a kid, we'd be sitting at the dinner table, and she always had Play-Doh at her house, and so she'd bring out the Play-Doh, and we'd sit there, and we each get like this lump of Play-Doh, and then, naturally, when you have a lump of Play-Doh, what do you think? Like, oh, what am I going to make it into? Right? And so we'd be sitting there. I'd sit there with my siblings and be like, oh, like we'd see a photo or we'd think of something or we'd Google something like, oh, this is what I want to turn it into. I want to make a walrus. And so you sit there and you try to shape the Play Doh into a walrus. Right? And I have fond memories of that. And this image is almost like what Paul is trying to get us to understand and think about when he says, do not be conformed to this world. Similarly, Paul is trying to help you understand. And help you hear that we are not to be shaped and molded to look like the world around us. To look like people who are not God's people. He's saying, do not let the world shape you. And this brings us to the root of the problem. Okay, so that's what we're addressing today. The root of the problem is simply this. Guys, we struggle with being conformed to the world. If we're all being honest, as followers of Jesus, we struggle 
with looking like the world around us. We do. You and me, in some way, shape, or form, I myself, we struggle with this. See, everything we consume in this world has an effect on us. It has an effect on you. Think of how food affects the body, right? If you were to eat ice cream and pizza every meal for the rest of your life, that's going to have an effect on you, right? You're probably going to gain some weight because there's a lot of fat in those and dairy, and you're probably going to be pretty unhealthy. But what if you ate veggies and meats, like veggies and meats every day, every meal for the rest of your life? What's that going to do? That's going to have an effect on you, but for the good, right? You're going to start building muscle because of the proteins that come with those food. Your body's going to build muscle and you're going to be healthy. Everything we eat has an effect on us. And I'm sure a lot of you guys with those high school metabolisms, you're like, I don't care. I'll eat a horse. It'll be fine because my metabolism just runs through me. It's great. It's like a super one. When you get older, it starts to affect you. I'm starting to experience that. So it'll hit you. But have you guys ever heard the statement, you are what you eat? Have you guys ever heard that? Now, Unfortunately, that's not literally a reality if we think of it in the context of food. Like my guy, uh, what's his name? Don Gorski. How many of you guys know that name? Don Gorski. There's this dude. Stri- I got this from Google. It's real. It's factual. Uh, this guy named Don Gorski literally ate a Big Mac every single meal for 50 years and counting. He's got the world record, 50 years and counting, and yet, unfortunately, he has yet to turn into a Big Mac. So it's not real though he is my hero. Oh my goodness, Don Don Gorski. 50 years, it's crazy. It's not a reality in the food world, but I would make the claim that you are what you eat is true in the context of our spiritual lives. It is. I would say that similarly to how food has an effect on our bodies, everything you consume in your heart. Everything you allow for your heart to consume will have an effect on you, whether you notice it or not. It will. Think of those statistics I shared earlier, right? There's so many inputs that are regularly flowing in and out of our hearts, when you consume things like movies with sex scenes or swearing or hatred and evil acts in them, they will affect the way you think. They will affect your mind, cause you to think ungodly thoughts. When you consume ungodly friend groups at school, spend time, a lot of time around people who do not have a good influence on your life, it will affect your behavior. It'll produce ungodly behavior in you. When you consume social media that tells you how you should look and how you should not look, it will affect how you view yourself. And the result of such are things like insecurity and or jealousy. All these inputs in our life have an effect but the problem is not simply that we consume, right? You guys live in this day and age. It's consumer age, but it's not just that we consume, but it's that we allow those things into our life on a regular basis. And it's what we consume. It's what we consume. And God's word here in Romans chapter 12 tells us, do not, do not let the world shape you. Stop giving yourself and shaping your life around somebody you follow on social media or an actor in a movie or a friend at school who is not a follower of Jesus. Stop doing that. Stop looking like the world. Stop messing around with sexual immorality. Things that the world talks all about and says, oh, it's okay. Just try it out. Stop doing that if you are a follower of Jesus. Stop talking like other kids, other students talk like at school. Even if you think it's cool, if you're a follower of Jesus, stop. 
Do not be conformed to the world. See, as followers of Jesus, we should think long and hard about what we consume on a daily basis. Because as followers of Jesus, we are called to be on guard for those other voices in our life that are constantly trying to grab our attention and conform us, change us. Now, by all this, I am not saying that you should never come in contact with anything of this world. I'm not saying that you should never go to public school or have a TikTok account or watch movies that are above PG. I'm not saying that. And I don't believe that's what Paul is saying. Paul is not telling us here to be hermits and go live on homeschool island with all our Christian friends and never see anything in this world. That is not what Paul is saying. What he is saying, though, is that while we are in the world, we are to actively guard against becoming like it. The truth is that we will, as followers of Jesus, until either Jesus returns or God takes us home, we will remain in this world, faced with sin, faced with the worldly evil that's around us that we cannot escape, and behaviors and speech and all of that. We will be faced with that. We are actually called to be in this world. God has designed that each of you as followers of Jesus should be in this world right now. He has you here for a purpose. We are called to be in the world, but we are not called to be of it or like it. We are called to be in the world, but not of it. And so the question is, while we remain in this world around all of these other voices, what are we to do in order to not conform? What do we do? How do we battle against this in our life? How do we keep and push against, push away, back against the things that the world's trying to use to conform us to look like it? What do we do? Luckily, Paul gives us the answer. And the initial piece of the solution that I'm going to unpack more next week, but we're going to touch on today. He says, rather than being conformed to this world, we are to be transformed by God's voice. He says, be transformed by the renewal of your mind. So we're not to be conformed, but we are to be transformed by God. That's what we are to be as followers of Jesus. And what Paul is talking about here is being transformed in thought, in will, in intentions, in purposes by God and for his glory. That's what he's meaning by being transformed, a whole new creation. He contrasts, he contrasts or counteracts, sorry, conformity to the world with transformity with God. And this transformation, some of you need to hear this today, first and foremost happens when we trust in Jesus. Jesus came, lived the perfect life that we could not. He died on the cross for the forgiveness of our sins. He took our sins upon himself and died, paying the penalty for our sin, and then came back to life, defeating death, so that anyone, anyone who trusts in him, trusts that what he did for you counts for your sins, would be transformed, made brand new, and established in a relationship with God forever. That is the first and foremost way in which we are transformed spiritually from the inside out. So if you have never trusted in Jesus, that is the first thing that you need to do today in order to fight against being transformed to look like this world. Trust in Jesus. Now, why do we struggle to not conform to the world? Why do we struggle? More specifically, why do churches and Christians and specifically many students your age struggle with conformity to the world? Why? Well, one of the main reasons is what Paul is saying here. It's revealed to us here. It's because we and you struggle with renewing our minds with God. Renewing our minds 
We don't do it as much as we should. The Bible is what Paul's talking about here. He's talking about renewing our minds, being transformed through reading the Bible on a regular basis that what we think might align with what God thinks, that our hearts might align with God's heart as we read the Bible. And the problem is we do not read the Bible as we should. I struggle to read the Bible as I should. But Paul is telling us here that we, if we truly want to fight against the world, we need to constantly renew our hearts and our minds by listening to God's voice, which is found right here. And if we aren't renewing our minds regularly in things like daily devotions or worship, what we just did, or prayer or fellowship with other believers, having conversations about Jesus, then we will struggle more with being conformed to this world. See, it's either you be transformed or you be conformed. Either you are currently here today and you spend time in God's word. You spend time in worship and you are being transformed. You see the effects of it in your life. You're looking more like Jesus. That's awesome. And you're seeing transformation happen or you're here in this room and you're not seeing that happen in your life as you should. And you, on the other side, see yourself being conformed. You're being conformed. You're looking more and more like the world. You don't stand out as a follower of Jesus at school. One of these two is happening in your life right now. The question is which? Imagine being out in the middle of the ocean Okay, picture this with me. Out in the middle of the ocean, there's no land to see in sight. And you're sitting in this like old raggedy boat. It's got some cracks in it. Got a couple dents. Got some holes. There, there's some leaks. So water's filling up. You're sitting in this rowboat. And if you don't regularly barrel that water out, refine the structure of this boat and seal the holes, what's going to happen? You're slowly going to sink. Your boat's going to fill up with water and you're going to drown. You're going to blend into the ocean. You know, when the word of God, when this book is not present in your life, you will notice a sinking effect into the godless world around you to the point in which no one even sees you. Like looking out of the ocean, can't even see it. They don't even see a difference in you, someone who claims to be a follower of Jesus. This effect will happen on your life if the word of God is not present in you. Sin struggles become more prevalent because regular conviction that comes from God's word is distant. Insecurity will rule your heart because the constant voice of God who defines you is distant. See, creators define purpose. Creators define purpose. The one who created the can opener, I was just thinking about can openers this week. The one who created the can opener gave it a purpose. What's his purpose? To open cans right? If you, now, now you could take a can opener and you could attempt to use it in many different ways. You could try to use it as like a spoon. That's gross. You could try to use it as like a surgical device. Ouch. Uh, or you could try to use it as like a weapon or to hurt, like defend yourself, uh, which you're probably going to lose, to be honest, right? You could use it in many different ways, but each of those uses are and will never be the can opener's intended purpose, which is to open a can. See, God is our creator. God is your creator. He made you, and therefore, as your creator, he defines your purpose. And in order for you to understand your purpose in this life, you have to know your creator. You must know God. And how do we do this? How do you do this? By being transformed by the renewal of your mind 
in God's word, getting to know who God is. Right, that is why we read the Bible. I don't know if you guys have ever asked this question like, oh man, this old book, yeah, I'm told to read it all the time. But if you've ever understood why you read your Bible, the reason why you read your Bible is to know who God is. That's why we read it. So know who he is. See, this is the benefit of being renewed constantly in God's word. This is the benefit. It says in the end of our verse, look at Romans 2 again with me. It says, do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewal of your mind so that by testing or knowing God's voice, you may discern and know what the will of God is, what is good, acceptable, and perfect. You will know if you renew your mind what God's will is, what your purpose is, if you read your Bible. That's crazy. It's a promise. God promises this to you. So how are you here today making God's voice here in Scripture the most important thing in your life? How are you doing it? Or is God's word the most important voice in your life? Are you just going to church once a week? You get an hour. I get an hour with you guys. Are you just coming to church once a week for an hour and then going on with the rest of your life for the extra 167 hours of your week being consumed and consuming the world and listening to all the other voices and then coming back the following Sunday for another you know, quick shot of God? Like, is that your life right now? Or is God's voice something that is regularly a part of your every single day? Because if your life looks like the previous and you guys go on in your high school time, on into college, you will experience a sinking effect into this world if it's not. See, the voices that are most influential in your life are the ones that you give the most authority to. And when we give our time, our attention, our allegiance to a voice, then we give our authority to it. We give authority to it with our time, attention, and allegiance. And so if that voice has authority, it will influence you. It will affect you. You know, if you give authority to a best friend, they will affect you. A wise counselor, a social media, Fox News, trustworthy authors or sources, whatever it may be, if you give authority to those things, they will influence you. And at the end of the day, we decide which voices will have the most influence on us, will have the most impact on us. And it's the one that we give authority to with our time, attention, and allegiance. And I'm here to say some of you need to stop. Some of you need to stop giving so much time, attention, and allegiance to voices in your life that are not God's. You need to stop. God's voice should be the greatest authoritative voice in your life. Should be. And there's great blessing that comes from that. See, the problem is that all other voices in this world, they're fighting for and winning your attention and the attention of so many other high school students who claim to be followers of Jesus. And guys, I want our high school ministry, I want you guys to be known as followers of Jesus who do not conform to this world. You guys don't look like the other students at school. You don't. I don't care if you go to a public school or private school. I want our high school ministry, you guys as students, to not look like other people, but to look different, to stand out, to stand out for Jesus. That's what I hope for our high school ministry to be when we walk outside the halls, the, the walls of Canyon Hills. Now I want to give you one more final application 
of this text in your life today. And I assume this is going to hit home for most all of you here. I believe one of the greatest ways to stop being shaped by the world and to start being transformed by the renewal of our mind is by giving purpose to all inputs in our life. So guys, start giving inputs, giving purpose to all inputs in your life. I'm reading this book called The Wisdom Pyramid, and it's written by a guy named Brett McCracken, and he gives a very helpful and biblical, wise encouragement regarding how to use our phones. I believe everyone here, most all of you, have a phone. He says this about our phones. He says, when you go online, ask yourself, what are you going online to do? Is there a specific goal? When you open YouTube, is it to watch a specific thing? When you reach for your phone as you wait in line or walk from one place to another, is it for a purpose or is it just out of habit? When we aren't going somewhere, we'll go anywhere. And the anywhere of the internet are rarely good for us. So as I've been reading this book and receiving encouragement from it, I've been trying to develop this practice of whenever I'm on my phone, whenever I, I don't have my phone on me right now, but whenever I'm on my phone, before clicking that shiny red play button, or before clicking the different apps on my phone, pausing and asking myself, what's the purpose? Why am I about to click on this? Or maybe to take it to an even further step, before even hitting the on button on your phone, I encourage you to pause and ask yourself, why? Why am I turning this thing on that will expose me to more voices? What's the purpose? Guys, some of you might be stuck in this habit of constantly scrolling and clicking and watching and getting sucked into algorithms, playing video games and movies and all this entertainment. Some of you guys are stuck on this treadmill. And guys, I'm here to say, wake up. Get off. Like, get off the treadmill. Right? Everybody knows high school students of this day and age are students that are just constantly on their phones. Guys, there is godly purpose in getting off that treadmill for the purpose of renewing our minds in something far greater than a phone. I've been trying to develop this practice in my life. And guys, I encourage you to join me because I struggle with the same things too on my phone, on media, on all those things. So I want to invite you guys to join me in this so that we can renew our minds, so that we can regain time Right, practicing this myself, I believe, will help me, and I've already seen some results of this, I believe will help me gain back that 20 minutes, or that 45 minutes, or that two hours where I could spend time with God. Spend time laughing with my wife. Spend time fellowshipping with, or giving attention and love to my friends that they deserve. Or growing in true biblical wisdom versus worldly wisdom and the newest media trend. This is the result of giving our attention back to God, renewing our minds in Him. Another practical tip. Again, I want to give you guys practical tips here. On your phone, if you want to do this better, there's apps or there's settings that you can do to make it so that whenever you click on an app, it'll make you type in your password or make you do the screen lock or whatever it may be, you can YouTube how to do that. Doing that, even putting that setting on an app on your phone will help give you that extra second to just think. Like, oh, what is the purpose? So I do that on my phone now. I have certain apps that I know I'm prone to click on regularly that just suck me in. And so I click on it now and I have this thing, it pops up and I have to type my password. And in that even just brief second, it makes me think, like, hold on, what is the purpose? So if you want to take this seriously, I'd encourage you to do something like that. To help guard your heart from the other voices in this world. 
make you think about what the purpose is before you go on those things. Guys, God calls, no, he actually commands us to be good stewards of our phones, our gaming platforms, our televisions, and all media outlets. He commands us to be good stewards of those things. And so my question that I want to leave you guys with today is, are you being a good steward? Are you being a good steward? Or do things need to change in your life today? Guys, make that your New Year's resolution, to be a good steward of media unto the glory of God. I hope we could be known as a high school ministry that lives by that. So guys, let's start off this new year by giving our dedicated time to reading the Bible. I'm gonna talk more about that next week, so please come. If you guys are serious, and you wanna take this seriously this year, you wanna dedicate your time to spending more with the Lord, come next week, and I wanna unpack more of what that looks like. But I wanna give you a hint of the solution, and this is it. It's gonna be crazy. Guys, start reading your Bible. What? Guys, just start reading it. You don't need a fancy Bible app. You don't need to figure out the perfect plan. Just start reading. And if you need a spot to read, if you're like, I don't even know where to start, Connor, start in the Gospel of John. That's what I'm gonna encourage you. Just start reading. Open up to the Gospel of John. It's the New Testament. It's in the second half of the Bible. And just start reading from the beginning to end, like you would any other book. That's my first encouragement for you today if you really want to be a part of the solution. Guys, stop being conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewal of your mind. I want to challenge you today to look different, to look different at school, on social media, how you honestly go about your homework and your tests, in relationships with guys and girls, in your sports teams, look different. Not just for the sake of yourself or just to look different or stand out, because I know that's a thing today, but for the sake of making Jesus known in a world that is blinded from him. That's my challenge for you today. So let me pray, and then I have one quick announcement before we get you guys out of here today. God, thank you. Thank you that you are our source of light. God, in this world that is so dark and continuing to darken, Lord, you are our light. And God, you call us to be beacons of your light. You call us to share the truth that comes from you with the world around us. You call us to look like your son, Jesus, who did not look like this world, who stepped into this world to save us. So God, I pray that we as a high school ministry would look different and we would make you known with our lives. God, help us to understand even just one way that we can do that better today. And I pray this in Jesus' name, whom we live for. Amen. Okay, I have one announcement for you guys before I get you guys out of here. Uh, we are going on a missions trip as a high school ministry. We've done this in years past, and it's to Mississippi. And so I'm going to invite my friends Taylor and Will up, and I want them to share with you guys a little about this trip and why you guys should come. So I'm going to invite them up. Let's give them a round of applause. Uh, both Will, yeah, you guys step up here. Don't be shy. Uh, both Will and Taylor have been on this trip, right? You guys have been on the trip? Yes. I just want to make sure because that would not be good. They've been on this trip. Uh, I got a couple questions for them and I want them to share with you guys. So Will and Taylor, uh, we got this Mississippi trip coming up. It's on April 10th through 16th. Okay. Uh, what do we do at this trip? Like what, what did you guys experience going on the Mississippi trip? Yeah. Um, so when we go down there, we work with an organization um, called Because People Matter. Um, and within that, we worked with a church called Hilltop Church. And one of the things that we did, we painted and did yard work for a house um, for women that are coming in off the streets that are, um, have addictions and are just in need of help. Um, and I think this specific organization is so cool because these women come in um, 
wanting physical restoration, but they don't realize the spiritual restoration that is going to take place mm -hmm. in this in that house and um, in their lives. Um, so that was really amazing. And another thing that we did, we worked with a uh, canopy, and that is basically an orphanage um, that bring children in that have been in sometimes traumatizing situations, abusive families. Um, and we spent a couple hours with them each day and we just talked to them and we prayed with them and we just played games with them. And I think that was probably one of the most coolest parts of the trip, just being able to talk to someone who has never even heard of the gospel and just love on them and pray with them. So Yeah, yeah. yeah. Will. Um, a couple other things we get to do down there is we get to, well, as Taylor mentioned, we get to work doing several different ministry opportunities with a church called Hilltop. And another one of those is called Soul Snatchers. And essentially, we go to this really difficult area in Jackson, Mississippi, which is their um, kind of like capital city, like where everything is. Um, and there's a lot of drug use, um, gang violence, and a lot of other stuff going on in that area. We go during the daytime and we offer free food, but we also offer free prayer. And like, as a student that like grew up in the church and does, you know, kind of did all the steps growing up, right? This was a great opportunity to kind of push me out of my comfort zone and like take my faith for my own, right? Like I'm having to minister to these people and pray with them. Um, and it's just a great opportunity. Uh, another thing we got to do is we got to kind of help run the Hilltop Food Bank. And um, I think God blessed us because that was the day where I think they had the most people come to the food bank. And um, what I did during that was I went down a huge line of cars and I would pray with um, each person in the car and um, as they're like waiting in line to pick up food. And it's just a great opportunity to like, you know, serve people like in your own country um, that need help and need spiritual restoration. So, yeah. Yeah. Uh, can you guys share with us, like, what did God do in your guys' life as a result of all those things that you just share? Yeah. Um, I think for me, one of the big things was I've been on mission trips before, like out of country, right? And um, going on a mission trip, like, in the United States was, like, kind of, it was, it was honestly more life-changing than, like, all the trips I've done, you know, outside of the country. Because you really kind of take for granted, like, the things we have here in Washington. And we're like, oh, like, everywhere else is probably like this, right? But when we go down there, we realize that people are, like, just in need there than they are across the globe, right? And those people need ministering, and those people need prayer and help um, just as much as anywhere else yeah. so yeah awesome yeah what are you telling i also second that it is so important like ministry is right here in our backyard and we don't have to go to some for, far off foreign country um just to do that we can spread the love of the gospel right here um another way god worked in my life though is through my prayer life um at soul snatchers as will was saying we got to pray with people and it's a lot different for me when I'm just praying in my room by myself than going to praying with someone who desperately needs help and is in a situation that is traumatizing and they just desperately need the gospel or something to help them. And I think my prayer life drastically changed after that, being able to pray scripture over them and just meet them right where they're at is exactly what Christ has called mm -hmm. us to do. And so that is definitely um, how God worked in my life. Yeah, awesome. Okay, now the big question, why should they go? Like, wh why should anybody here go on this trip? What would you guys say? I think if you desire to have a more intimate and personal relationship with God, then this is the trip for you. Um, if you want your prayer life to grow and others to see um, the word, the gospel in you, I think this is definitely the trip for you. Um, if you want your friendships to be changed drastically, your community will be changed when you're coming back um, and on that trip. Hmm. Yeah, I would just kind of bounce off of that. Like, this trip definitely builds a community, and I think that um, the people that went last year are, like, still in contact with all the friends we met down there, hmm. and, uh, like, we text them constantly. And as a group, uh, as a group of students going there, I think right now we're all still connected. Like, we hang out and we... Um, reminisce about like our trip and it's just awesome so there's the community but there's also like just the ways you grow in your faith is is crazy because you're put in like a position where you kind of have to do things and it pushes you out of your comfort zone a lot 
And when you jump on that, it's, it's amazing. Like you see a lot of change in your life. Um, yeah, for anyone thinking about this or just didn't even know Canyon Hills goes to Mississippi, I would definitely, definitely think about it because this trip is amazing. And I don't even think like we can really put into words like how amazing it is. And um, so that's why I would encourage you to go to experience it for yourself. So yeah. Yeah, awesome guys. Well, thanks for sharing. Um, if you guys are at all considering or just interested in this, uh, we're going to have applications at the door when we open this up and you guys are walking out um, right there for you guys to grab. So please just grab one and look it over uh, and consider applying. You got two weeks, two weeks to have the application in. Okay, so if you guys are considering it, we'd love to have you guys on the trip. Let's hear it. Uh, give it a round of applause for Taylor and Will. Thank you guys for sharing. And with that said, we'll see you guys next week in high school ministry. Again, no life groups this week. So we'll see you next Sunday. Grab a Mississippi application on the way out. Thanks, guys.